You know, it's just someone else's computer. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, this is the March 19th, 2021 edition of MVP Office Hours. Um, we're glad you're here. Um, you can find us all um, on Twitter. You can also find MVP Office Hours on Twitter. Um, you can find more information at mvpofficehours.info and you can email us at mvpofficehoursus at gmail.com. We have a list of events that, um, well, as you know, everything is seemingly everything is virtual at this point. Um, and we will continue to post the links and update the links as we, we get them, but um, you can visit those links at your leisure. Um, all events by Salesforce are available at the admin.salesforce.com slash event. Um, and then there's also the calendar for trailhead events and webinars, Salesforce and community led. Um, upcoming dreaming events happening right now, or maybe they're winding down for the evening, um, is London's Calling. Um, they were having a great time this morning when I woke up and I hadn't had coffee yet. Um, Dream Olay is coming up. Um, Albanian Dreaming is coming up. And Salesforce Success Anywhere World Tour is making the rounds. Those are kind of out of order there. We got to move that one up the, up the calendar a little bit. Um, but then you know, all Salesforce events are virtual. So um, we encourage you all to join your local trailblazer group or a non-local trailblazer group, um, you know, to find more friends and colleagues that do what you do in the ecosystem for um, help and support and um, help you move along. Um, trailblazercommunitygroups.com for meeting invites. And then there's the quick doc that I'm not going to read that link, but it's there in the bottom of the screen. So... <laughs> I'd like to hear you pronounce it though, but um, we can seven meta blah, 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 14 va. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we also have um, colleagues um, hosting global MVP office hours. Um, is Carlos on? I don't didn't see him pop in, um, but he does host the Portuguese office hours in Portuguese, but translates everything very well to English and back to Portuguese as needed on the last Thursday of the month. We are hosting US on the first and third Fridays. Um, and if we jump a week, we will definitely let you know ahead of time. But occasionally we do that for five week months and for, for holidays that might pop in. So that covers this slide. The next one is welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we're gonna skip a week like we're gonna do next time because of Good Friday. <laughs> Speaking of, we're skipping a week, right? So we're going to have our next call on April 9th, um, 2021. And then it'll be two weeks after that for the, the next call. And then we will land squarely back on the first and third for May. Um, the format of our chat is an open Q&A. Registration is not that link anymore. Um, recording. Oh, yeah, we got to fix that. Nope. I got to fix that one. That registration link had to change. Um, recordings are available on the community um, group and on Twitter on our YouTube channel. Um, our favorite hashtags, problem solved together, because we all get in up to our elbows on this stuff together. And community learner and MVP OH. We ask that everybody participate, share your experience, input, and recommendations and references. Um, and if you have... Um, reference material, share that link with us. Um, if you have a question that you want us all to group think on, please raise your hand in the chat um, so that we can keep track of who's coming up. Um, use the chat to post resources and links. Um, and please mute yourself when you're not sharing so that you don't hear my dog barking in the background. Um, oh, that's me. Um, <laughs> and then um, announce yourself, introduce yourself, um, because I don't know about anyone else, but I am awful at pronouncing people's names correctly. And I really want your name to be easy to understand and pronounce. I can't even say my own name some days. So do we have any MVPs on the call? You raise your hand. We got Squire and Dale and we have non-video participants all over the place. So, all right. All right. We've got lots of people. Yay. Hi guys. All right. And then as Dale likes to remind all of you, we're so glad you're here and everybody here is an MVP. So um, we're, we're really glad that you're here and you're learning and you're finding these challenges and you're challenging yourself and you're getting help where you need it. So to kick things off, we are, we've got, um, we've got two questions. Patrick, um, is Patrick on? 
He is. I oh, fantastic. Think. Okay. Um, you had a question about assigning territories to opportunities. Um, do you just want to run through this real quick? Sure. Uh, let me just get my technology going here. I'll well, tell you what, I'll read the question as you have, as we have it, and then you can clarify when you get your tech up and you can share your screen in a minute. Um, sure. I have a territory structure in place for accounts. I reviewed Trailhead and tried things in my sandbox, but I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to an Apex class. Is there a standard Apex class that I can apply to assign my territories to the opportunities that belong to accounts? So, um, Squire Dale, where's your territory and opportunity? Yeah, uh, I was kind of hoping someone else who doesn't hate territory would jump in here, but. Yeah, this is not in my well, wheelhouse. So, well, and yeah, mine either, at least from a Salesforce standpoint, I, I've done territory management in past life, but not in Salesforce. But I, unless anybody else has anything, I'm also going to ask why an Apex class and not um, declarative automation, but maybe it's a, uh, a data amount question, which is totally fair. But oh, any and, territory and, management experts, or go ahead, Patrick. If it was way. your question, we should yeah. let you ask. <laughs> so, I, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm a, like a, a lay person kind of thing. Um, so I've set the whole territory structure up and it works and, and all the accounts work and, and it's all at the account level. And I was digging, like, I need to bring it into the opportunities. So my sales managers can see, you know, uh, which one of their manufacturer representatives have what. And so I don't care how it's done. I, I just, I dug into it and it looked like that was the way to do it. So I, it doesn't matter to me how it's done. Just that, like a, a, a given opportunity that belongs to an account would show the rep, the sales rep that owns it per territory. So, help us understand how how far in the process it's working. You've you've got territory management correctly assigning the accounts. Yes, that all works. Okay, and then from account to opportunity. Are you trying to update the opportunity owners? Are you trying to bring the opportunities in view of the account owners and therefore their managers? What, where are we trying to get to? Um, just, just to have it like, so, um, because it looks like the, the standard functionality in Salesforce, there's a territory ownership um, field, I guess, or, or like a, um, what do you call it? Uh, a section on the opportunity that shows you know, the territory. And uh, so regardless of who technically owns the opportunity or owns the account, um, but the, um, so th there's a spot for it just to, just to pop up. And in the functionality of it, like, like it looks like there, like if there's a standard uh, uh, trailhead exercise where you, you, you know, put together an apex class and it, and it assigns it, but I, I've never done that. And I, I, I took a stab at it, but I, you know, I can't make it work. Gotcha. Oh, no, that's fair. Um, so I guess I'm assuming that, and again, never, this is me admitting ignorance here, I've never played with territory management in Salesforce. So when you enable territory management, it, it basically shows more fields on the opportunity object that pertain to the account's territory. Is that correct? Yeah, there's, um, okay. I believe so. Um, well, I, at least in reporting, I know I, I can, yeah, the territories are funny where, where like territories don't even come into all reporting. There's only certain reports you can get that mm -hmm. connect to the territories, but you can run a report based on territories, um, you know, and the opportunities that belong to the accounts that the accounts are assigned to the territories. Right. So uh, do you have anything that you can show us, Joy, if you want to kill your screen, if you can show I can us do something? that. Because uh, uh, another question that I would put out there is, do you know what your, um, your org wide sharing defaults are when it comes to accounts and opportunities? Like, what can any end of the line sales user see about like their peers or across teams or anything like that, that may also help bring some of this into view. So, so we purposely uh, rolled it out within the employees that, that the sales are employed, uh, what do you call it? You know, direct employee sales managers, everyone can see everything. Okay. So it, it's pretty opened up in the sense that like, there's a lot of um, stuff that's shared. There's, there's uh, sales and um, 
you know, projects that are shared between sales managers. And then the territory structure where it really comes in is um, <clears throat> we work with manufacturer reps that earn commission that are not employees. That that's how that's who the territories are assigned to, or for the the territories and then the accounts. And so I just I have um, just the basic uh, accounts, um, you know, signed uh, signed to territories. Okay. So just a side note: everyone you just described, though, they're all actual Salesforce users, right? So the the um, the direct employees are Salesforce users, and then the reps are they they have the partner license. Oh yeah, partner portal. Partner, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I just want to make sure we're not trying to solve one problem with the wrong tool. So, I mean, territories is a sharing model. I don't remember if territory actually trickles down to partner portal access. Well, and 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 I've got that to work. So then when a, a rep logs into their portal, they can only see the accounts that belong to their territory. Right. But is that because they're on the account team or because it's territory? Because it's territory. It is. Okay. Um, all right. Interesting. Um, so the same uh, rule sharing should be able to be applied to the opportunity. Um, the, the, are, do you have multiple territory assignments per, oper- per account? No. It's, it's just a one-to-one? Yep. Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, thank you, Joy, for posting that. Yes. Yeah, so I'm actually like, I completed this badge, but I, it's been a while. Um, the, 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 that's where the Apex came from. That's where this automation came from, I think, um, is the Trailhead um, Territory Management Best Practices. And it talks about, you know, manually, you know, assign territories manually and, um, and all that good stuff and going through all those steps and then filter-based opportunity territory assignment. And then it goes into define the apex class for filter-based opportunity territory assignment also. And so that's where I think um, you're getting hung up. Is that accurate? Yes. And, and so they're like, it, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a coder. So like the, the, yep. the there's some, like what I'd like is just to like, you know, just tell Salesforce, yes, I want to open up, I want to connect the opportunities, but but there's some set of code I have to put into the Apex class that there's some example codes out there and, I, and I've tried stuff in the sandbox, but it, it doesn't work. And then I'm way over my head, you know. Right, right, right. Like it's but one thing you... to do it in the playground, it's a whole nother thing to do this in, um, in real life. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, I... Is a sandbox accessible enough for you to, to show us? Like if, if you have it at least started somewhere. Well, and, uh, and, and I just, I, whatever uh, Apex class someone had posted out there, I grabbed it. I, I just created a new Apex class. I po- pasted the text mm-hmm. in there. I ran it and it didn't work. Gotcha. That, that's as far as I got, you know. Gotcha. So, so if someone had the magic Apex class, I could just paste it <laughs> and I'd be on my way and but I don't know, you know. Right. I'm a little surprised that it requires Apex at all. Is, I mean, again, not knowing much about territory management, um, is Apex potentially required because of order of execution? It has some prioritization baked into it. I mean, Um, well, and I'm wondering too if there isn't, if the apex isn't trying to assign territories based on a different set of rules, but at the end of the day, if you're just manually assigning the opportunity. So like, so for example, in that assigned territories opportunities, part of the trail, the first box is assigned territories manually to the opportunity, right? Which I can do, which I've done. Yeah. And all that's doing is filling in a field with a territory. I believe it's an ID if I'm not mistaken. And so you should be able to use a flow, I would think, to do the same on an opportunity create, say, what's the territory for this account, assign it to this opportunity as well. I don't think it requires Apex, but I'd have to dig in just like you're talking about doing. The Apex really drills more into like like heavier lifting, I think, is what that's trying to accomplish. I'm trying to dig through it while I ramble. Which I'd be happy to, to try a flow out, like a process flow. Yeah, I mean, and, I, and that's what I'm, wondering is is that how you're going to make this happen without having to write any code but um 
Well, so for what it's worth, there is nothing referencing territory on order of execution, like nothing in a sub bullet or, or anything like that. It, it should be baked into the sharing recalculation because it's, it's okay. assessing the t territory inside that uh, group sharing, ownership sharing, manual sharing, and territory sharing. It should be doing that work there, I think. Criteria-based sharing is number 20. Um, and that was the only thing that came up when I tried to find S H A R. So there's, there's territory management basics. There's best practices. There's advanced territory management. There's increased sales efficiency with territory management, sales, territory planning, sales, territories, and forecasting. Like there are, there's at least six badges that focus on territories. And so I don't know if you've gone through all of them, but the link that I posted was um, was the one that references the apex, but that also references having completed the previous badge. Oh, and and, and I, I looked at that and I, I, and maybe this is just my having too many thumbs or whatever, but I couldn't, I couldn't get to the earlier, like. Yeah, I'm not uh, seeing that mm -hmm. module either. And so I'm, um, I'm trying Jake, to. Jake also just Jake. shared it. Yeah, Jake shared a link in there. Excellent. So yeah, the Apex Dev Guide Management mm -hmm. Code. That's probably what it's referencing in the trail, I would assume. Yeah, that's what I, it that says. It's referencing. I'm not sure if that's the right link. And go ahead. I, I will say though, if for flow and maybe complicated with the partner community, um, manual sharing gets really or automatic sharing gets kind of wonky. Okay. Um, so just you you. If you do try to go down the road with flow, just make sure you test it. Typically, when you use sharing in communities or whatever they're called experience clouds now, you want to use code that handles it a little bit better. Is You want to use code if you have to do anything. Like So I, I guess just to clarify what you're saying. So if if manual assignment works for the community, then flow doing the manual assignment should also work. But are you saying when anytime you have to write like programmatic sharing modeling, you want to do that? Or yeah. say more, I guess. Yeah. Um, but are you saying that they're able? To, they're able to see their opportunities. It's just that that information is not being populated on the account. Because what I want to get right, they, they can see them. They can see the opportunities just fine. Because um, what I want to do is run reports where I can split up and then show you know, the sales managers. Okay, because each each of the employee sales managers has like five or six sales reps. So I'd like to like you know, have, they want to see reports where it's split out. You know, this, this, this rep has these opportunities, this next rep has these. And so if I can connect the account uh, territory to the opportunity, then I can run reports that splits it out nicely. And, and you mentioned that the territories are assigned more to like external reps, not necessarily like your right. internal users that might be in the role hierarchy and then in reporting, right. being able to leverage like my and my team and things like that. It's, it's an external hierarchy. An external hierarchy. The internal people gotcha. need to be able to see everyone's stuff. Okay. Cause I mean, it feels like it, and, and are they needing to see this at the individual opportunity level or is it more from a reporting level to see all the things? Like more, which, more what, what's our level of focus? More reporting, reporting and like, okay. So it kind of feels like you, you could potentially get away with having a, a report that is um, accounts with opportunities, and then we just got to figure out how to hone in on what specific accounts to show. If if the account if if the account is the hub of that KPI wheel, it's accounts with opportunities. How do the accounts get filtered down to then show all opportunities? Am I saying that right? Or is it show all opportunities assigned to a specific rep, regardless of what account? What's our pivot? It, all opportunities, regardless of account. But but okay. which opportunities a, a rep has? Okay. Okay. I still stand by. Maybe able to get away with reporting. We just got to figure out how to filter it down. And so potentially that, like, if I created a flow, that that could make that work 
I don't think you need a flow if you if you can report from the hub is what Dale's saying. There are already related records or child records of the account. Okay. So you're basically just replicating the same data point at a lower level and then pulling it apart. So you should be able to do it from the firm, I think is what Dale's the, saying. The, the yeah, the thing that go ahead. Well, the difficulty I've had is that in, in the reports, there's there's a whole there's a section of territory reports that like all the other reports, like like accounts with opportunities or like, did, like none of them have the territory fields I can get to. You just so, report type? Sorry. Oh. Sorry, Dale, you go. Well, I was gonna ask, so going back, are, are reps aligned to just one territory? Yes. I mean, I feel like the, the simplest way like the simplest, if you had to get a report out today, solution could be because it's one to one, put the territory like on the user record. And if those reps are the owner of the opportunities, build your opportunity reports based on the owner's territory. That at least that at least gets you the report that if show me all the the Northern California reps opportunities and boom, there they are with their account information and maybe save a handful of reports, one by each territory. I don't know how many territories there are. Again, it's a, that, that's the simple, if you had to get it out the door today solution, while you then go investigate how to get this more automated, you don't want to have to have automation in any process. If reporting can get you those mass sums of data, that's, that's ideal. Territories are kind of their own beast. But if you know, if you know the rep is one to one with the territory, yeah, that maybe gets you out the door at least right now. Does that I make sense? It does. So they're not the owner of the of a like they're typically not the owner of an opportunity. Okay. So are they? But you're saying to connect that to their user. Well, so are where is there a custom lookup to the user uh, that on the opportunity that says this is the rep, as opposed to using the owner ID. Like where, where is this rep reference or is it a territory reference? Cause, cause the rep connects to the territory, the territory is connected to the account and then the accounts connected to the opportunity. Okay. So let me make sure I got this. Um, the whiteboard, yay. Okay. So we have the account. Account has, I don't even know if anybody can actually see that. Account has many opportunities. You're saying the opportunity is not owned by this rep. The owner is maybe the account owner or someone internal or whatever, right? Right. Okay. Is on the opportunity, is me, Dale, external rep indicated anywhere? No. No. But me, Dale, Kansas region, that is on the opportunity. That, that you're on the account. I'm on the account. I as Dale or I as Kansas? You you as the, the rep firm. Okay. As the owner or as a custom field? As the territory, as connected to the territory. Okay, so territory equals Dale. And then that organically where I am all of my accounts in my territory go bring in the opportunity. So then where does the individual rep come into all of this? Well, and even even like even at that point, that, that would be good enough. Like like the just even connecting to the rep firm okay. that's connected to the account. Okay. And how many? Okay. So what I think you might be able to do again as a starting point before you get into yep. kind of automation is if you were to build a report of accounts with opportunities and, yeah. and it's, a, it's just a cross filter, um, you could even potentially put that as a record detail report, which what that does is if you put that report on the account object, you can run that report from that account and it'll automatically filter down to that account specifically. If you're on ABC company, and that reports there, it passes in, uh, or any other component. If, if you were to say, I know ABC company belongs to Dale. Yeah. Show Dale 
all his accounts, all his opportunities right there. Am I jiving on that or Joy Squire, did I miss something? I have no input on territories. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, I feel like there's a lot of, a lot of darts being thrown at you, Patrick. Um, yeah. I feel well, like I, was, uh, I don't, I don't there's think a little I bit of disconnect between like how the territory and the users related to it connect back to the firm, to, I keep saying firm because that's what it's called on our board, to account because it's not a direct report type. Um, there's some questions about whether or not have you tried to create a custom report type to achieve the goals. Um, I feel like there might be some conversation about like what Dale's talking about, which is that if you write that report and, and embed it on the lightning page, when you run it from there, it'll automatically filter down to Jingling's question. Um, that a record detail report is saying that like you run it from the record and it'll automatically apply that filter to like a larger report. Right. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if the, like, is the code slash manual sharing you're trying to do is that not even really the thing you're trying to accomplish <laughs> you know if, are right. you just trying to set a value at opportunity that says i'm this is my territory or are you really trying to dig in and understand the sharing or split it up um i, I posted a link to a there's a, a summary article about the available territory management reports that are out of the box and there's one that's driven straight from opportunity that i'm wondering if it already does this for you okay so i can take a look at that um, yeah, but I, just, I feel like there's like a million questions I want to ask you. I wish we could have a user group meeting. <laughs> yeah. No, I appreciate all of this. I, so I'll, I'll take a look at that. I, I, I just, I know in the past when I've tried to, I've tried to create reports from the account or from the opportunity from different ways. And I couldn't get to, like, it wouldn't give me the fields I needed. So I, I know I'm missing something. Yeah. I mean, you, you probably will have to create a custom report type if you're just not seeing certain fields. Okay. Because the standard report types just are missing what you're expecting. Um, so create yeah. a custom report type. Potentially. Okay. Um, again, we'd have to dig in to understand more what you're seeing and not seeing. Um, uh, it also gives you an opportunity to change the focus. So like to Dale's point, if you're seeing firms with opportunities, but maybe what you really wanted is opportunity is the hub looking up to firm and up to the territory and get, you know, like you can create a new cube that maybe delivers better what you're shooting for. Okay. Um, this is like, man, we could spend a whole afternoon on this. Right. No, what, I appreciate all of it. I, I, okay. but I'll, I'll start digging into this and then maybe I'll report back to you guys. Do yeah, you, absolutely. Is there something that you think, I mean, Dale, you had a lot of good ideas. Is there something you think we should, we should send Patrick to start with? Cause there's, that was a million things. Well, right. Um, I think the biggest thing is going back and re-understanding what is the prime objective that you're, you're trying to show here? It sounds like a report of opportunities, but is it by the territory, the rep, both? Like what, what's, what's the day one goal? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a report of opportunities by a rep, but I've named the territories the name of the rep. So like, even though the, the territory is connected to the rep. I've already got it named that way, and that's good enough for what we need. Yeah. So you're not even because reporting because by territory then. You're just reporting by a, a random field, basically. A field that, right. that I made, you know, yeah. Because a territory and a, there's one there's one territory per rep and one rep per territory. It's one to one. Yep. Okay. I I mean I, I feel like it's Honestly, I feel like it's an opportunity report where when you're building that, that custom report type, you, you look up to the account. And if you can look up to the territory from account, you just pull that in and you filter on what the territory is. Sure. Or group by, like if you're doing an, like a system level report, um, the territory is your grouping and then show all opportunities by Kansas, all opportunities by Chicago, all opportunity by New York. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was perfect. I, I, I'll work on this. I appreciate it. And... Yeah. <laughs> I love how we're just like, oh, we have sort of seen this and we'll go from there. Did um, you try Excel? No, <laughs> oh. no, don't go to Excel. For the love of God, don't go to Excel. Patrick, you, you just like reopened a can of worms that I need to get my head around <laughs> territories was... all over again. I love it.
that was mean of me to do to a first time meeting attendee. Welcome, Patrick. We were, we do appreciate it. Oh, that was a good <laughs> that one. That was mean. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I, Zingling I, had a question um, in the success group and email about um, the uh, an adoption dashboard of sorts. There is um, an adoption dashboard available on the App Exchange for free um, that I've just stuck the link into the chat, um, but it, it's great. And I'm going to share my screen real quick and I'll walk you through what, um, what's available there I, just from the app exchange. Um, there's a couple different things. This is like user logins and logins by role, and they've got some other things going on, but I mean, this is as, as simple as like searching for adoption in the app exchange, and you can really find some, some choices here. So, um, in app exchange, here we go. Search anyone. Um, but there's there's a number of different ways you can do it. So if you're is if if the adoption is regarding um, how often are they logging in, or how many accounts are being created this month or this week, um, or how many opportunities are being created this month and this week, and how many contacts are being created this month and this week, and that sort of thing, and you can you can find some. Um, other sample dashboards, <clears throat> excuse me, that are available, or you can build your own. Um, um, but this, yes. I, I, I sorry, uh, I'm Shengling. So, so I, I, I download that like uh, that adoption dashboard from the app exchange, but we we kind of looking because the the way we our system work, it is like for example the contact the accounts, all this information are created by the system. So, but like uh, we have um, uh, sales, uh, like we have different department. So we have a lot of custom uh, objects built in our Salesforce org. So they, they, they want to check, for example, like, oh, how many, um, how many times they work on certain area in the Salesforce, because we want to, to benchmark, like, uh, is the team adopting the Salesforce right now or not? So, so, um, so I look in that standard dashboard there is pretty limited to the login and the activity like task created, sure. and created a contact created. That's not something is a good way for us to, 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 to monitor because the, like for example, the people can, can be on Salesforce on working on like uh, pushing some nodes and checking accounts uh, information there. So, so we want to see if there's a better way to cap more granular information like Google Analytics. So I think like there's an um, event monitoring log can utilize, but it seems like it involved the licensing. So I'm just trying to see if if there's any other way I can achieve that goal without purchasing the more granularly level detail from the event log, so. Dale Squire, do you have any suggestions for skirting the, the purchase? Because <laughs> that's, right. I mean, that, that's what we're trying to do. And so um, if, if you want the granular um, data available, I mean, I think it comes down to the purchase, but if you want to track, say, number of um, specific records modified by a department this week, you know, you could certainly build your own reports using <clears throat> the adoption dashboards reports as a model. Um, right. And you, so there's there's other things you can do, but, you know, that are more specific to your company and your needs. Um, but one of the things you would want to do is make sure that that department is included on your user record so that you can group things by mm -hmm. department um, and then identify what records that you expect them to be modifying. And then if your system is modifying records, like if you have a, a system that's modifying records, that's going to kind of wipe, wipe everything along the way. Um, so it'll be a little bit more difficult. Well, and, and you may have covered it because I'm, I'm looking at other things too, but uh, not just the object, but enabling their field history tracking and actually reporting off the history tracking object. And then also to Joy's point, knowing um, you know who's in what team, having a way to aggregate that. It, it can still be done for free, but the important question is, what do you need to know? By whom do you need to know? Uh, what are the important factors in that? Um, 
And then, yeah, how like long? Just, just, right? right. And for how long? And if, if you need to keep anything past 18 to 24 months, does it become reporting snapshots? Is it reporting snapshots anyway? Um, the first question, the first two questions before you get into the super how is what? What yeah. do you what do you need to track that is deemed adoption? And, Dale, and, I would add to that why. why. Why do you well yeah and why? Oh, always why. Yeah, good call, Jackie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, for, coming from my own perspective, adoption is a is a fuzzy terminology that a lot of people have definitions of, and sometimes there's more interest in what before they realize what the why is, and you build automation or you implement a platform, you start adding you know, records or tasks or chatter posts or something to try to achieve a goal that wasn't even the goal. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of why questions. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, like we just like invest a lot of money in the Salesforce. So like the, the owning department want to roll it out to everybody to monitor people are using it. So that's the why. So uh, yeah. Right. But isn't there the also lightning they... usage? Has anyone used that? Because I used it at my own company and I love that page. The lightning yep. usage page mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. The lightning usage page is great, um, especially if you have folks that keep sneaking back into classic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, especially. But I mean, the why, even, I mean, even, even a question like, well, we spent a lot of money. We got to make sure people are using it. That doesn't necessarily mean they're using it for the right things. There's still going to potentially be other layers to pull back. I'm working like my, I, I'm a consultant. I'm working with a client right now that um, we're migrating from one org to the other. It's a service cloud implementation. We're fine. We're migrating five use cases that were on their case object that actually didn't belong on the case object. So if you were to say how many cases are getting created, they're creating way too many, but they're not supposed to be cases. They're actually supposed to be other things. So just because you're getting those numbers doesn't mean you're getting the answers that you need. There's always going to be one more layer to peel back and totally get the we're, we're spending a lot of money on Salesforce thing. I mean, everybody is. But that, if you really want to go big philosophical picture, and you'll hear me talk about this a lot, if you're looking at it as we're spending a lot of money, okay, you're looking at the cost. What's the cost? What's the cost? What's the cost? No, 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 no. We got to figure out what it takes to figure out what the investment is. We've invested in Salesforce because not what's everybody doing, it's what can we do with it. So um, having that data of how many, how many times the customer service department's updating an account or doing whatever, yeah, that helps. That is not, that's not always going to get you the big answers that you need. It just becomes a piece of data in the overall conversation that needs to continue to be ongoing, if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. So but I, I'm just like asked to build some kind of that report for them. So that's kind of like, okay, I can only see those activity being logged and logged in, logged out. So I think like I can certainly enable those um, history checking. So probably can can help to answer some of those questions if they're interested in that. So yeah, yeah. Right, right. I think that, I think the the why can't be understated. And let me share a horror story. So when we rolled out for a global investment banking platform, the, the message from executive management was, if it's not in Salesforce, it didn't happen. And then on the backside, they asked IT to manage adoption. And so we started having these conversations and the, the leadership there said, well, I think we're just gonna start with logins. We're gonna keep track of logins. And if they log in, and we're going to give them a point and then over the first six months we're going to you know figure it out and what happened was that everybody who had a shortcut in their chrome that automatically kicked off salesforce got multiple logins a day without even doing anything but at the end of the day they got bonuses for using the platform then you track the other way and you, they said well then it should be activities well that turned into every time anyone did anything including a phone call and no message, they were logging those things again and again and again and also offsetting it. And it started boiling down into a conversation of like, well, we want to know when they're updating critical dates and inputting certain values like, aha, that's an adoption metric. We can measure to that. We can track that. And so um, it's it's very easy for leadership to say, we want to know, but it's, it's now on you to kind of ask, why do you want to know and what's the best way to measure that outcome? Well, and and I'll and, and so adding on to that, um, what organizations like that sometimes 
fall into. And I, I will, I would love when, when it's safe, I would love to philosophize over drinks with anybody about this, but the best process and the best system um, doesn't require much human input other than here's what I did. And then the system can go from there. If you're trying to track how many times people log in, yeah, you're either going to have somebody with a Chrome shortcut on the other end of it. I had, when I was an admin, uh, I worked for the railroad. Like it doesn't get any more old school than that. Uh, some of our best sales reps were the old guys who just had their notebook. They kept all their notes in for a week. And then Friday afternoon, they'd log them in. Their logins were once a week. They were also the highest sellers. So you can gamify the Salesforce usage all you want. Logging into Salesforce isn't necessarily going to bring your revenue dollars in. It's a multi-dimensional thing that defines success that Salesforce is just one piece of, but that's where Salesforce can help the investment and it can quickly become too much of a cost if you don't look at it as an investment as part of the whole. It's a, it's a multi-pronged balance. So mm -hmm. um, my recommendation now as a business analyst and everybody's already said it, always ask why keep asking why if you've asked why five times i bet you can find a reason to ask why a sixth time and a seventh time and an eighth time and you're gonna get to the core of what actually needs to be done because at some point <laughs> I, i'm sure other parents will, will 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 attest to you get worn down by kids always asking why but it's because they are the best business analysts out there kids just like why are you making me go to bed now because you're tired no i'm not why, why do I have to go to bed when I'm tired? I'm fine. You can stay up, but you're going to wear them down eventually to say like, okay, here's why, or maybe we didn't think this through, or maybe it's not important. Turns out it's not important because we peeled it back and you just saved yourself all the time and heartache of building all this stuff that either wasn't going to get used or be, it was so overcomplicated. It ended up breaking the process. Yeah. Appreciate that. Totally get it. So <laughs> Yeah. So appreciate that. I would look to the, the I would go, go back to ask why. I ask why. So <laughs> I think they make into their goal to do that. So I just need to support them to monitor that the successful mm -hmm. in outcome. So, but I think like uh, appreciate all the suggestions there. Definitely going back to talk back to them again. It's like, hey, what kind of matrix you want to monitor and why? Yep. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll just put, I'll just put one more thing on there. Um, as you're getting that data, just, just trust me. This is, this is us as a community here. Um, as you're getting that data and as you're starting to get answers, if you ever like, if you ever run into a stumbling point where you're trying to analyze that data, ping us on the success group or send us an email like, like you did to, to start with. And, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what this now means. Like we're, we all, all of us have so much collective experience that we're more than happy to jump into conversations and, and help coach you, redirect you, guide your path towards, okay, you're getting there. Here's how you get further. So don't, don't think that you can only ask those questions here in this call every two weeks. We're more than happy to help offline. Yeah. The, the other thing is if you're ever like stuck in a meeting and you're like, you know what, let me marinate on this. Let me think about this a little bit and let's continue the conversation. So you can kind of step away from folks that might be getting maybe emotional and excited about it. And then you can step away, hear what's going on, understand what's going on, process it, and then come back to it. Um, cause I know everyone here has probably had that really emotional stakeholder that needed their field today, right now. So All right. here's that. Yep. So. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Bob Jingling, really quick. Uh, you did ask about what a record report. Uh, oh yeah. Record detail. Because I thought like uh, when I work on the lightning page, customize the lightning page, I think I can only embed the chart, the report chart. I don't, I never see it able to do the details. I, I think you can click from the chart then into the detail report. That, right. that, it doesn't display the table of data. Um, you it can only do like the graphic charts. Yeah. Um, it's not like a dashboard where you can display a table, I think. Um, you can only display a chart. Yeah. A drawing, a picture. All right. I think because we're... because oh sorry because oh, I kind of like uh, uh because we also have some a scenario like I want to build something one kind of one page app for them so can group different things together when they are not related so that's why I was looking at that maybe I can use those report embedded but but it, I can only do the chart the graphic part so that's not helpful so 
So I kind of got stuck. Maybe there's another way. Like if I want to put put uh, different objects information in one page, but they are uh, may not be related to AI. Like may not have relationship between the objects. So, so how can I do that? Is that possible? What? So I guess what you're saying is, uh, let's call it a dashboard, even though I know, you know you're saying like a one page app, but not charts going straight down to the detailed data. Is that what you're saying you wanna show? No, I want to show like, because uh, uh, for example, like uh, we have a team, so maybe work on, uh, certain items like the promotion as well as um, the other stuff. So I want to group all these things together in one page so that they can, oh, okay, when I do things on promotion, I just click on here, create a new record, or this, uh, see a, a list of the, the, the promotion or, or, or like uh, enrolling the, 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 the registrar, like our customer into promotion. So I stay in that pages to do multiple things instead of I have to navigate in the different tabs, you know, like uh, different objects to, to achieve the things like, because there's so many bouncing around. Like, it's almost one. like you need a console app, maybe not necessarily a one pager, but a console app that will keep tabs sticky so that rather than you look at a record, you click to a new record and you lose that old one and get there, you can click across tabs and it keeps the records open, but you still only see the one that you're looking at. Yeah. Oh, okay. I love console for that. So definitely take a look at that. That was my first um, my first thought also. And then I like had some wild like screen flow modules. I was like, no, don't go there. We're not there yet, no, no. <laughs> I think that's too, too much. Um, because there is a like there is a, a a learning curve right to learn how to navigate through salesforce and so um the sooner they learn how to navigate salesforce instead of um i guess spoon feeding them everything at once um the better off they're going to be um because scalability wise you're not always going to be able to spoon feed them and so the sooner they learn to navigate the better off you're going to be yeah and I guess it's also getting an understanding of what does each team need to really know about Salesforce. And then I look at someone like Christy, who, you know, is making tens of hundreds of comments. <laughs> I don't know, getting, getting a lot of accolades about, you know, training videos and here's what training should look like and mm -hmm. how you can make it digestible. And I had, it. I was, I was trying to riff on my thought there, Christy, I'm sorry. I meant it with all the love in the world, but it's, are the users even properly trained to know what they should be using Salesforce for to, to get to all the things that they're looking at? Yep. They just want their Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> Christy, <Yeah. laughs> Christy, we're gonna put you on mute. Excel. I'm I kid, I kid, I kid. Um, does that help? Yeah, yeah okay. it is. Yeah, okay. thank you. Very good. Um, Squire, who's up next? We have 10 minutes left. Yeah, I think we've got Brittany and then Jackie and Manny have a double dip. All right, Brittany, let's hear what you got. Okay, I can go ahead and share my screen if you'd be so kind. Yep, go for it. Thank you, thank you. So I have a custom registration page because this client is high touch and very special and works with one particular rep, okay? So we have a special registration page and a flow that parses out leads that go onto this page to a particular rep, okay? So everything is working fine. Um, the issue is that I want to send an email notification when one of the clients register on this page. The email notification works fine but I tried to put an image in the text template and it looks sad. It gives me that, that thing. Uh, so the text template. Are so the, you The image to... fails? Correct, the image fails. It's supposed to be this. It's it, just a PNG file that's saved on my computer. So I don't know if I'm saving it in the right spot or applying it correctly. Um. So my first question is, what's your Outlook settings? Um, because different organizations will have different sensitivity levels to inbound images, um, especially when they're coming from systems like Salesforce, because they're kind of deemed as marketing and spammy and, and whatnot. 
I don't doubt that the flow is working well. I'm wondering if it's an exchange problem on your company's side. Oh, Have you so tried, like, hmm? like try testing like a Gmail, like a personal web-based account and see what happens. Oh, good idea. Okay. I hate I sad, can... sad, broken image links. Yeah, I can work on this. Like it makes me feel like I'm missing like a, like, missing out on like, you know, that great photo. Um, and sometimes I'm glad they're broken because the topic is not something that should be coming to my email anyway. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so I, sometimes I'm grateful for broken links. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're gonna knock, knock through that. And then um, do you want us to tag team on this? Or do you want us to hang on? I am like two seconds away from having awesome. it done. Let's see here. We'll pull up email. Did you activate the new flow? Yes. Okay. Awesome. That's <laughs> what always valid. trips it's me valid. up. <laughs> it's valid. It's totally valid. <laughs> Why didn't it work? Oh, yes. Email came through okay. on Outlook waiting on Gmail. Come on. Oh, there it is. Oh, what's it going to have? Sad. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Okay. So well. yeah, how do you put images on text templates in Flow? What's the right way to do it? Does it need? I'm wondering, uh, would a static resource or something like that potentially be a little bit more solid? Right. Instead of um, instead of something from your computer, something that's like stored in Salesforce or stored on the web, or it's. Uh, how do you do that? Or can you send I don't me a know. resource so I can put it? <laughs> yeah. I know the words. I don't know what they mean. Oh, okay. I think an Agreed. asset, a file asset, I think. Mm -hmm. At least Google that. File yeah, that that I, I know what you're what you're thinking there, Jackie, and I think you're on the right path. Because I mean, I think what's happening, right, is that the, the file's embedded in the text template, but it's not embedded in what's going out the door. Um I mean, it's, it's kind of a similar issue you have with like an email template versus a text as well. Um, you know. Isn't the best practice to have a link that pulls the image from a server somewhere? So it's not actually sent just because of the size of the message and then it sort of pulls it in. Maybe that's for HTML email, I'm not sure, but. I, it is, but that's if you have the keys through all the right doors to make it happen. If you can get the image on the server to then have it return back and render. And I don't know if this is helpful, but when I was doing an email template, I had to put it on documents at my old company and then make it publicly facing. So I had to make it available to external users. Otherwise it wasn't showing up in the email. Yep. Yeah. Does that help? You want to give that a whirl, Brittany? Put it into documents, make it publicly facing, and then use that in your template. Brittany? Sorry, I say, I, well, yes. <laughs> I would say so, if you want to click through that, we can bring Jackie in for her question and then circle back. I think that's a good idea. OK, Jackie, what? Great, thank you. Um, I think mine is super easy. I just want to know if anyone has um, integrated FileMaker with Salesforce and used something outside of the big guys, um, because my client does not have the budget this year for the big guys like Zapier or MuleSoft. Um, and I found one from a company called Fostering CRM Solutions. It's a one-way sync. They will write um, custom develop a, a bi-directional sync. Um, but I'm just wondering if anyone has has done this. FileMaker is a um, used by companies that do classifieds and print material like in directories and things like that. So it does all the pagination. It takes the order and does all the pagination that gets sent off to the, the printer. No, I will take silence as no. Yeah, I don't have that one in my back pocket. Nope, me either. Is there is there any big questions or concerns that I should have using this type of a sync that is not going through the app exchange? Um, 
They've only implemented it for two or three customers since 2015 because it's not a big requirement or request, but they did build a solution. They claim that uh, they've only ever had, I think, one issue um, because the cl client did not use a dedicated license. So of course, when they changed the password, it broke the connection. Happens all the time with all kinds of stuff. That's not, I'm not a big, I'm not concerned about that. Um, but I'm just wondering if this is a good Band-Aid until they can get the big dollars in next year's budget. Any hard hitting questions that come to mind that would make you go, nope, don't do it or ask this question? You might be, I mean, you could ask for like, um, you know, referrals from the their customers and see see if you can communicate with them and ask some questions to the people that are using it and see what they like and don't like about it. Um, you can ask and if they don't give you that contact information or they don't like facilitate that discussion, it might be a red flag. Okay, all right. Um, and the question that Manny had, he was able to solve it during this call. So he says, thank you. <laughs> oh. Oh, I I'll, love the I'll chat. Ask, I'll, I'll ask the question. I, I, I did a work around using a report. Wait, there's a, there's a, there is a bear talking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is happening? Cody got a voice. <laughs> like, when, when, when you lean in, the bear has a face. And when you lean back, like it's gone. So lean in more. It's fun. There there you go. Office go. hours goes the animatronic. <laughs> Here, here's what our, our, office really looks like so COVID-15 I, I didn't know it was a bear so uh, I appreciate that um, so I we're working with uh, product schedules right now and from the product schedule even though it is tied to a, a product line item opportunity line item um, I can't find a way to uh, bring anything from the opportunity line item or the product up to the schedule um, so the reason for this is that we need a, a different date than just the scheduled date for certain types of products. Um, the same client that we're working with that does uh, classified ads, they've got print products and web products. And for print products, they have a fiscal month that's different than their web products. Um, so again, I used a, a row level formula and a report to get the information I wanted. But what I was trying to do was pull the product family from the product all the way to the schedule and I was not able to do so. Has, has anyone been able to figure out a way to bring information to the schedule from an opportunity line item or from the product itself? You just made Joy's head spin. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that deep into life right now. Um, let's see. Also, like I can't find it where I'm at on my computer. Um, that's a that's a that's not my not my my bucket. That's just it sounds like you're you're boarding on CPQ, but I don't know. And those objects aren't related enough, no matter how tall the relationship is, to just like pull it down and down and down and down and down through flow or something. Yeah, I tried flow. I tried process builder. You can reference. You can't do a process builder to fire from a schedule. So you have to fire it from the line item. And so I okay. use the has schedule as a trigger to then try to push information up to the schedule and it wouldn't do it. Um, and probably, just the process builder or did the process builder go, no, go into a flow? Uh, no, just a straight process builder. And it let me create it. It just didn't actually populate the field. Um, and then I try to flow as well, and I couldn't. And same thing. Hmm. The has schedule is it actually a formula or is it a, is it a data field? Has form uh, has schedule is a checkbox that gets checked once there's a schedule created. Right, so but by the system, or can you manipulate it as a user? Yeah. Oh no, system. You can't even gotcha. see it on a page layout. Yeah, it might not actually be triggering your event if it's. If it's a right. false formula checkbox, it's not actually an update to the record. It's kind of like lead conversion that you have to really get deep in the weeds of code to leverage that as a as an event. Yeah, right. like the thing the the workaround on that is to basically just like instead of check for that value, just every time one of those updates, just check the things that would normally make that true and then update <laughs> versus versus triggering on that checkbox. Okay. Yeah, are, there, are there no side doors on any downstream records getting updated or created that you can 
slip in through? Not that I'm aware of. I, I'll take a look and see if I can figure something out. And I, like I said, I found a solution for now, but if someone was to look at the schedule, um, they could get confused that they were looking at a report and looking at a schedule and figuring out why the two don't tie. Gotcha. Did you swear at it? That's usually what helps me. Oh yeah, there's, there's, and, and I have less hair because of it too, so. Okay. <laughs> I'm out of ideas then. If, if, if profane language doesn't work, I'm, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> I just need to give this guy kudos. He just started learning um, flow this last year, and now he's like the king of flow. Oh, well man. done. He's the, well done. he's the king of flow in t at T2. <laughs> and he gives Brian <laughs> Kong, uh, you know, rent for his money on some, you know, questions here Thanks, and there. So. <laughs> well done. See you, Manny. I have to tell you, like, his face popping into Cody was like... <laughs> I was like, did I see that? Like, what am I looking at? It was crazy. When I, um, when I upload the, the recording to YouTube, I'll, I'll try and grab a, a screenshot of that and we can <laughs> <laughs> forever memorialize that. Awesome. All right, let's see, Brittany. Brittany, how's it going? Yes, so I was able to upload the West Corp logo as a file with a PNG extension, but then I don't actually know like how you make it display on a... Uh, what about documents or is yeah, documents not a lightning thing? You might have to go into classic. Ooh. Do you want to classic into a document? Okay. But, but if it's just mm -hmm. to get a static resource available for the file, it's not like a general user thing. It is like an admin thing. Right. Um, so that's the, that's the only reason I say that because I, I never ever want to send like your standard business users into classic to do something. Um, but if, you know, if it's a static resource, it's like an admin cubby hole. Like, you know, we have this, like, <laughs> we have this back room where we store things. Mm -hmm. Brittany, did you see that link I posted for you, by the way? Brittany, did you see the link? Are you she's oh, doing I'm like 12 things right at once? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I was looking for the link. Oh, okay. I'm creating an email. Link. So, uh, the only reason I even posted it, I was digging deeper and I ran out of time, but some of the screenshots and the conversation in this thread sounds exactly what you're talking about. And they ended up yes. kind of in the same spot that we're talking about. It's a putting it in the documents folder, linking it to an email template, and that's how you get it to go outbound. But uh, I didn't get farther than that, but it, it felt similar. And Sarah confirmed in their documents is classic only, which maybe over time becomes something like if you can get it to work from a document, that's awesome. It gets you out the door. But five, six years later of, of lightning, you have to ask, is documents going to continue to be supported? Because chances right. are, if it was going to get into lightning, they would have done it by now. So right, Dale, get, it, get it to work now. Start thinking about it. Back Dale, we know that like classic isn't going to go away until those big, big customers convert so i mean it's when the big customers that have done all of that visual force customization and all of those like custom pages when they don't break <laughs> then, and they go to lightning then we'll get over it. I, we'll, we'll i'm just turning it. all my dev orgs on to classic only and hoping that you know i'll be what keeps that that's enough yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm uh, George stuff. commented that the uh, the assets library is basically the documents tab in classic, so you can get to it from. Mm. Oh, uh, like good, that. good. That's awesome. Gotcha. Good. This this is where like this is where like the new learners are going to teach us all something awesome because mm -hmm. renaming makes my head spin. Um, we are after two o'clock right now. It's two o four, and so I think do we we need to kind of wrap things up. Um, Anyone have any parting thoughts? Thank no. you. They, oh, you're welcome, Brittany. <laughs> We're going to have a conversation about how to convince people that uh, KPIs are important and, and not just words on a piece of paper. They, right? It's true. They're not. They're, it's an acronym on a piece of paper. Um. You're not I mean, seriously, I like it, <laughs> investment versus cost. It is definitely a mindset. It is, it's, it, it's an underappreciated mindset. For sure, for sure, for sure. So thank you, everybody. You don't have to go home. Well, you're probably already home, but you can't stay here because we're <laughs> going to shut it down. So thanks, everybody, for visiting. We'll see you in a couple of weeks, April 9th, April 9th. Yep. So we'll see Three you. Three weeks. April 9th. All right. Have a great couple of weeks, weekend. guys. Be well, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.